Hello there and welcome to, do, to today's video. I'm Chris from Synced Stories and we're going to do a video on uh, how to create detailed panels. So in yesterday's video uh, we were producing the detailed row for uh, page 12 uh, the row A here as you see and what we're going to do today is we're going to produce uh, four separate documents one for each of the four panels you see here so that's our project for this video but before we go on I just want to uh, remind everyone here that this video is the production of this book this comic book full color science fiction action thriller adventure and um, 40 pages and uh, this is installment one of um, eight so in season one of Unlimited Danger, there will be uh, eight comic books, eight episodes, um, high paced, uh, full thriller, romance, drama, uh, mystery, all that kind of stuff. Speed, action, um, plots and all these um, special adventures that kind of make everything uh, so enjoyable to read about and like a like if you're watching movies a lot then you you recognize um, these motifs that uh, modern um, high-paced action movies have anyway so this is the uh, front cover then and then the back cover is here with the list of the eight titles for all of the comic books and it's the number one here that we're producing right now which you are uh, seeing in this video all right so that's that now back to Photoshop well, let's start this whole process so this was the main result of yesterday's video and what we will do now is that um, we will take the other result from yesterday's video which was the panels view uh, which is a enlarged portion of, of this one so you can see here this is uh, the frame here the height here if we take the first panel here and compare them this is the uh, this is one size or this one format and this is another perhaps 25% bigger or something like that and that means that when I print these two documents out I have two different scales that I can be working with now what I do do is that I'm only using this scale here for drawing the frames and drawing the balloons themselves. So I'm printing this out on a, on a copying paper and then I'm going to my light box and I'm using 
this page here when it's printed out as the underlay and then I put another piece of copying paper above it and then I trace the balloon here. I try to make it so nice and smooth as I can and similarly for the frame of all the four panels. So, but in terms of the illustrations, I have a choice because I, ca I can um, I can decide if I want to draw in this scale or if I want to draw in the slightly smaller scale. It depends on the um, on w what I'm going to draw and whether there, there should be some detailed background for instance and if there is a detailed background that has to be done um, I may take the decision to draw it bigger in this um, scale here otherwise I, I have a tendency to use this more because shorter lines take less time to draw so that's one reason and also another reason why a smaller scale is uh, preferable is simply that it it is closer to the final scale of the production uh, in printed form and because of that you do not get um, the same uh, need or the same feeling of having to draw lots of lines on the paper because if, if you have a big format if you have a big area of white there's there's some um, inbuilt in me at least some inbuilt um, sort of um, feeling that I have to draw many lines to sort of fill this out in some some sense and but the smaller the area I have the less I have that need so. So if I make it very small, then I don't have to do very much. Uh, so it's not. It it. I I get the impression that. Um, it really matters which scale you are drawing at, and also another point to, in in terms of scale is of course that. Um, you get used to a certain scale so some people can draw very very nicely at uh, a smaller scale perhaps but then when they um, try to make it bigger then it's it's not the same curves and it's not the same distance the pen has to travel and, and all of that so so there's some something to be said for for having a consistent um, consistent scale to always be working at so so you learn how that scale will um, scale down to your final production in this case the the printed comic book okay so that's that's some reflection so now let's um, skip this printing layout and let's just get on with um, so this this is a result from yesterday's uh, session and now what we have to do I have to I have to go and open the the document uh, for today which is the
panels document. So here we're going to, uh, if you, as you see on the left here, I have space here for this is an old, this is an old um, design from some other uh, similar document that I'm reusing. So I'm just replacing everything here with new, uh, fresh illustrations and text. And which, this is very nice because I don't have to rethink what I should name everything in. Everything's already named and I have everything, everything's already grouped. And so it's just filling it in. So the first thing we can do, we can fix the um, document name. So I'm clicking on the, on the first layer there and then I'm uh, typing T on the keyboard to get the cursor, text cursor here, and we are now on page 12, and this is row A, so it should say A1 here, and today's date is what, it's the 30, July 30, 30th, Okay, July, let's make that explicit, and 19. Yeah, I created this system already a year ago, so that's why I have still 18 here. Um, okay, so let's just copy over this, so we have the same date here. We may we may want to revise this some other time, but for now it's the same date here. Just cut and copy here, or yeah, copy and paste rather. Um, okay, so this looks good, and now I have four of these, as you see here, up in the layers. I have four, one for each panel. So I'm going to just select everything by triple clicking on with my with my pen here on my Wacom board and I'm now doing copy and I'm selecting making panel 2 visible the text here and I'm one, two, three, four, one. Oh, okay, let's do it like this. I'm just putting the, the cursor inside the text field here and I'm selecting all and then I am pasting the, all, the whatever I copied before and then I'm just changing panel two here instead. And now I'm deselecting here and selecting this one instead putting the cursor down select all paste change this to three and then i'm deselecting that and selecting this one instead in the cursor select all paste a4 okay Okay, hide, make visible. Okay, so now that one, and let's go back to number one there. Okay, so so maybe we should double check now. Also, let's so we have number one, we have number two, we have number three and we have number four looking good all right so now let's do the pictures now we want to select all here copy we go into this document and then i want to do put myself at the cropped picked and paste 
a new crop picked here because as you may remember this is a cropping of the original um, design that was was uh, bigger before and um, I showed you in the in the previous video that I had a, a Photoshop action that uh, automated that process so I'm so I um, uh, prepared it for um, to be quickly included into this document all right so what I do now uh, I have that one selected and I'm pressing now V for the move tool and now I'm dragging it with my pen here up to the blue line right just to, to make an visible um, an indication here that okay the scale was perfect okay so it, it uh, um, the scale is as I expected it to be so everything is okay uh, so th these pictures are in the perfect scale now for for us to be continuing with our work okay so we have confirmed that and now we just want to move here in the layer we want to cut each of the, these panels out and paste <coughs> sorry paste them into each of these uh, folders in our left so we want to put one here and one here and one here and one here so let's do that let's uh, so I'm now pressing M on the keyboard for, for the marquee tool. So I'm dragging it up here now, copy. And I'm putting the selection on the already uh, pasted panel one from a previous project. But I'm now just mm, pasting that over there. And I'm going back to the cropped picked. And I'm just deselecting that also so it's not visible for now. And I'm also taking this one here, copying this one. And you can see here that I'm bringing across also some, uh, s some small parts of the um, panel um, on the side here on each side actually just to just to um, remind me that there is something around here so I have to uh, easily see what that is okay so I'm copying that and I'm going down to panel 2 pasting that going back to the cropped picked but now as you see here panels 3 and 4 are not uh, visible completely here so I have to go to the move tool again and choose shift to be able to drag the whole uh, picture to the left um, without moving it uh, vertically so I'm just so I'm holding shift and I'm dragging it over here to the second half so to speak of the picture and now we continue the process of we um, I'm pressing M on the keyboard for the marquee tool and now copying and going down on panel 3 and pasting going back on the cropped picked and I'm pressing the M tool and copying going down to panel 4 pasting and now I'm just renaming the layers so I'm copying the title of panel 1 here and pasting it 
But then I'm not copying the panel 2 name, I'm just pasting the first one and replacing the, the 2. I'm double clicking the layer 3, pasting the name and exchanging for 3, double clicking and number 4. So that's, I think that's quicker than actually taking each of these old ones and, and copying and pasting them. Alright, so now we have, we can remove the old ones and if I'm holding, I'm holding control down now while I'm clicking so I can select any layer in any order whether they are um, closely um, beside each other or not. So control on the Windows version of, of Photoshop is, is good for that. So now I've selected all of these, so now I can just, with my, my short command for delete layer, I can just um, take, take them all to the um, garbage bin, like that. So now we have these uh, fantastic uh, panels here, or we should have them. We haven't really confirmed it, but let's check it out. We should have number one there, we should have number two there, we should have number three there, and we should have number four there. Alright, so now what we need to do is only to... Um, we have to move all of them to the center. So let's do that. So I'm just pressing V for the move tool and then I'm just trying to uh, approximate see that they end up in the blue line here and I, I want I want them to use to to line up with the blue line and this is not just a an exercise in uh, sort of uh, what do you call it being a pedant or or, or like like that, but but actually these are very useful useful lines. The blue lines here, when printed out on paper, these are very useful because um, sometimes when you do a frame uh, that is short here, if this side here, if it's a very narrow uh, frame, uh, let's say the frame is is uh, maybe just this half, Leo, maybe like that, then it's very hard to, to make this line uh, perfectly horizontal. But if you have a longer line, then it's easier to, to place your ruler um, uh, perfectly lined to, to that longer line. So that's why I'm using, that's why I'm a little bit particular here, you'll see this in a moment. Um, even more. Okay, so so now, okay, so now I'm I'm clicking on the visibility here for one, and I'm making number two visible, and and I'm just uh, I already have the v, the move tool selected. And I'm just approximately putting it in the in the middle here, and of course you can see. Uh, approximately in the, in the in the middle here with this center mark here that it goes uh, and also with these um, move uh, how should I uh, they, they have a name but I it doesn't come to me at this moment it doesn't matter panel 2 is done panel 3 we do the same thing here we try to center them both in the and now using shift and up arrow instead and a few down arrows without shift okay there it is and panel 4 should be and I'm just dragging this in 
and a shift right arrow approximately like that and just a simple arrow up one or two times okay so now now they are all approximately centered but here of course as you see um, even though they are centered with these marks here um, I have included the, the gutter here on the left so and that means that um, they are not centered within the panel only but they are centered the whole cut out here so but it doesn't matter really it's it's um, I can do whatever I like but it's just an approximation to to get everything um, in the in the horizontal direction at least uh, approximately centered okay so now I'm just going to fine-tune everything and I usually do like this I just go down here to 200% magnification and I just make sure that that this that the red here and the, oh, whoops the red and the blue are exactly aligned and they are so that's panel 4 I did this for panel 3 and then we can see we I'm, I'm one pixel off here down arrow on that one and then panel 2 here I have to scroll a little to the left here and that's perfectly aligned already and where are we I'm dragging I'm scrolling to the right and I need one up arrow here at least okay yeah one okay good so now I do a control zero to just restore back to normal so this let's just check it again here now that everything looks good so we have panel one under control panel two looks good panel three looks good and panel four looks good and we don't have any panel five so I'm just deleting it okay so now let's do the print 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 out sheets so the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking away I'm hiding the center line because well we could have it there as well but since I'm going to draw it's nice to have an undisturbed panel interior I think so that's one reason so, and the first thing then I'm first thing I'm doing is I'm okay panel one up here that's visible and panel one down here is so I usually do it like that to double check it and now I just press Uh, control shift alt s F save for web to get my jpeg and I think we should have some did I have well oh these are okay settings for now save and we have the dialogue here on another page here so let's first locate where okay 
Okay, so here it is. All right, so we want to save the detailed panel. And we are on page 12. And detailed row. And we are working on row A. And we have our panels, individual panels here. So I just select. So here we have four old ones from page two or three or something like that. So, but we're, we're just going to rename them. And oh, I already did. I already did rename. Them. So they're always set up for just to be clicked on. So this is panel A1, save. And we just do a replace here. So it's very simple. And now we just uh, hide that one and we hide that one. And we go on to panel two here and panel two down here. And here's also an interesting thing. I was I was uh, messing around with Affinity Photo application, which I bought a few weeks ago. And the interesting thing with that is that it doesn't work the same way as Photoshop does. So when I tried it a few times, uh, it never really acted the manipulations uh, when hiding and showing uh, layers. Uh, it didn't do what Photoshop does. Because one, one good thing about Photoshop is that um, if you if if the folder isn't selected like here like the panel 2 folder if that is not selected Photoshop um, selects it when you click on any layer within that folder so if I click on panel 2 down here the layer panel 2 Photoshop will activate the folder visibility also, of course, because you, it's sort of natural, because you, you, you click on the layer to make it visible. And at that point, you know that you want it visible. So, so if the folder wasn't visible too, then it wouldn't be visible anyway. And that is what what Affinity does, Affinity Photo does. That so when you click, when when you m try to make a layer visible in Affinity Photo, and you cl you you click on the vi visibility icon next to the layer here, then the folder visibility is not affected so the layer is still not <laughs> is still not visible even though you clicked on it so um, maybe I did something wrong in Affinity Photo I don't know maybe there's some setting uh, you can check or something but but the, the default behavior was was um, um, really strange I thought I mean I think Photoshop does it as as it should be done so you click it if 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 the if the both the panel and the if if both the layer and the folder are hidden then if you click on the layer directly then the folder will also uh, change its visibil visibility status and that is how it should be done, I think. All right. So we're now on panel two. We double check the it's A2 here. And we have the A2 picture. And shift control alt S. Yes. And save. And 
and select number two here, A2, save, replace, enter. And now we deselect panel two and select panel three. We make it visible. Hide panel two and make panel three visible. That so shift control alt s yes. Save. And I'm selecting, clicking on A3 here now. And to the last one, I'm hiding 3 and showing 4. And I'm hiding 3 and I'm showing 4. And Shift Control Alt S. Yes. Save it and I'm clicking on number A4 there. Save, replace. All right. And then I am just going back up to panel one here. as my sort of default mode before I'm saving it with control S here now like that so let's check it out if we have some reasonable result here we have the folder here so this is the document we were working on and so I'm double clicking here on this one and let's see if we can drag it in here so this would be the A1 A2 A3 and A4 so I think they look decent. That. So I'm viewing them in um, Windows 7 Photos here now, just to get a get an um, a glance before I actually print them out and start drawing on them. Okay, so th I think that's that's all for now, and uh, maybe a quick reminder here that we have our 987 degrees centigrade science fiction action thriller. We have the hero Barry Riley here in his uh, in a in an awkward moment in a dangerous situation and. Um, as a re representation of the type of danger uh, that is happening between um, in between the pages of, of this uh, book and this is a uh, full color 40 page uh, printed version that will be uh, coming out uh, next year and um, we are trying to very diligently work to towards that goal to make this fantastic story uh, available to to kids of all ages okay so you have a good day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video